Okay, welcome everyone. <clears throat> we'll wait for a few more to arrive. It seems like some people have a trouble finding the link and getting on and so forth. So we'll just hang out for a few more minutes. Okay, we have a few people having joined us now, so we're, we'll get going with this. Uh, let's see how we do this. We do this this way. Um, so, uh, not at all that way. That way. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so let's uh, let's get started with. Uh, with this. Um, start with a little bit about me. Uh, most of you probably know me from one way or another. Uh, my name is Matthias Magnusson. I'm the owner of the consultancy Evil Ape. Uh, I'm also the founder and the leader of Swirg. Uh, then these are my two main contact ways I would say. Well LinkedIn also but, but one is the blog. Uh, where I write uh, about technical things, article technical things. Uh, lately, there's been one or two posts about what we're going to talk about today. And then there's Twitter, where a lot of other people hangs out, especially in international and uh, product managers and so forth. And I'm an Oracle Ace. Um, so, I usually talk a bit in every presentation I give about Aura World. It's a magazine. I think everyone should take a look at it. Uh, it's free. You just download it and um, um, you can subscribe. It comes in a PDF format. Uh, it's produced by the user groups. So this is not Oracle marketing uh, stuff. This is stuff from the real world uh, and a lot of Pretty well known people has written in it. Uh, here's a little bit of uh, some of the things that's been in it before. Uh, we've been highlighted uh, in it or are written in it uh, about the Apex Day that we ran before and uh, talking of that today. Uh, we are starting to plan to set it up again after the summer. Uh, early planning, no promises though, but uh, we're looking into it. And uh, I got one comment here that seems to say that sound or picture has broken down. Can someone 
put in the chat if you hear me, okay? We'll just wait for this to know if I need to figure something out or I really shouldn't. This seems to all be working. Okay, there we have it. That's what I thought. Very good. Thank you, Ola. Um, <clears throat> okay, so then we go back to this ODT. Uh, it's an acronym. Uh, it's been used at least three other times you know, by Oracle. Uh, in this context, it has the meaning of Oracle Developer Tools, and it's usually also followed by for Visual Code. Uh, so it's an extension uh, for that editor. Uh, if you don't use it, you really should. It's um, it's not often that I really like things Microsoft do. Most of it is okay. Some of it is great. This is fantastic. Um, <clears throat> uh, so it's a essentially a one-stop thing, uh, one-stop shop for everything Oracle uh, as you're developing uh, things in it uh, or when you're writing code and working in that kind of flow that you're in when you do that uh, it does a lot of helps you with a lot of things and you can stay in that editor uh, you can do direct change to database objects and uh, it allows for a file oriented workflow also uh, that is one thing that i don't think sql developer does as well as it could. Uh, it's more focused towards being in the database and doing changes. Uh, it's an extension in Visual Code and it's built and supported by Oracle. And it has lately, the last two years, it has picked up the pace and it's there's coming a lot of very nice things uh, in every new release now. Um, We'll take a bit, bit a look at how to configure a connection to the cloud and how to configure a connection in it. I'm not going to do that in the demo. Then uh, a very large part or the most, be the rest essentially of this will be a live demo. Uh, should network and the cloud and all of that stuff not work, this will be a very short presentation. <laughs> Uh, it's it's built to be shown because I think that is how you best see this. Uh, so so bear with me if you if you're not on Oracle's cloud. Uh, I think you should, and the reason I think that is that you get a lot of things for free: two databases, you run on Exadata, you you get a lot of things, not just uh, database, but other things entirely for free and it gets you a very easy way to connect to it and you always have a database assuming you always have an internet connection. Uh, so with that said, uh, setting up a connection to, to it is a special operation because it's not like an uh, every other database, um, um, at least not the autonomous databases. <clears throat> so. On it, when you get into the interface, you have this uh, heading, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, OCI. And out there, I've marked it in a, in a red circle, is a, a cogwheel. You just click that cogwheel, uh, it takes you to a web page written by Oracle, and it's very detailed. It tells you exactly what you want. It's not one of these documentation that you wish they could have gotten into a little bit more details. This is essentially click by click uh, documentation. Uh, there are two things though that I found. Uh, you may not, or at least the first one you may not run into. The second, I, I think we just all have to know about. 
Uh, so the first one is that when you specify your admin account, you, 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 you go to it in order to create credentials essentially. Uh, and the way it's documented is not how I, I couldn't find it that way. So I was in this, instead I had to go to the identity security area on users and click on my email. And then I got into the same place and could do the same things that the document then describes. Um, I, when I did it, uh, I thought it had to do with that my account is also the admin account for my cloud service because I'm the only user in my personal account. Um, I'm not sure anymore because I set up a new tenancy just uh, a few days ago uh, with, um, well, in, in, in Sweden, since there is one in Stockholm now, I, I set one up there. And it looks a little bit different. Uh, so I think it may be older tenancies that has this issue. So just one thing to be aware of. And <clears throat> then in a config file that, that you create, you refer, refer to a PEM file, this is security file that you've downloaded. Uh, and this document tells you how to do that and when to do it and so forth. Uh, and then you need to state where you've saved it. Uh, that has to be an absolute path. At least it does, didn't work when I had a tilde in it to represent my home directory. And then when you follow this document to the end, there are double arrows to the right of this red circle that, that I've drawn into the picture. Uh, you click that and, and then you get an, a line under this that shows that you now have a OCI connection. Um, uh, the, uh, some of, much of what I talk about here is also up on my blog. I wrote a post about how to do this because, well, we, we'll get to uh, what you can you do with it when you're done with it, starting, stopping, so forth. And I think that's kind of neat. Uh, it's a very, very easy way to to do that. So, and here's what we have when we're done then. Then it shows up. Uh, if you haven't, if this is my default connection. Uh, so if you want to have many of them, you need to name them. And there's a special few steps you need to do then. But most, I guess, has just their own. Uh, account and then it's just the default and it shows up like this and, uh, and in my case I have an autonomous transaction processing database which is the standard for all this autonomous normal database for normal general load uh, work that one can do. Uh, in this uh, I have a database evil ATP evil because my name is evil ape so everything needs to be named evil. Um, and in this case, we see that it's started and running and in good shape. If it stopped, that green dot will be red. Uh, and then you click on it and you say start and it uh, it's yellow for some 50 seconds, or whatever it is, while it's starting up. And then it goes to green. And, and um, So here's the context menu of if you right click on that database. So you can start it, you can stop it, you can terminate it, essentially destroy it. You can change the admin password. Uh, Service console takes you to the Service console in your web browser. So it's not here. Uh, and then on top you have uh, download credential files if you don't have them. And you can also create a connection from this which simplifies the process of creating the connection for you. Uh, so uh, it sets up a normal TNS connection. Uh, and um, uh, But it, of course, it links to a wallet, which is how connected to the cloud works and so forth. And all of that gets preset for you then. And if we select that to set up a connection 
to the ATP. So the first thing we've done here is a connection to the to the cloud environment where we can stop and start databases. And then we set up a connection, which is a connection to a database, uh, like you set a connection in SQL Developer, right? Uh, and then first you get a choice of either specifying where you have the wallet. I already had it in my case uh, because I've used it for other things, connecting with SQL CL and so forth to my cloud environment. Uh, so I have not checked in this box for download credentials. Otherwise, you check that and it downloads it to the place you've specified. Now, here is how create a new connection looks. And it pretty much looks this way, no matter what kind of connection you set up. This is uh, even if you do it on a local on-premise database or you do it on, on a database you have on your own computer and so forth. Uh, a few choices here, opens and closes uh, choices depending on what you need to fill in, but that's about it. Th this doesn't really change much. Uh, so in this case, it's a TNS alias. The T TNS file is in the wallet. Uh, that's how the wallet magic works. Right? Uh, but it could also be a standard wallet or a standard TNS file you have on your system representing all your on-premise databases. Uh, TNS alias, this stuff with medium and so forth, that's part of their, uh, their cloud wallets. Uh, and, and they set up a few different services you can do use for different things. Uh, and then you fill in the user and password as usual, of course, uh, for the user you want to connect into the database with. Uh, and you give it a, a, a name and then you're done, you create it and that's it. Uh, we're going to see this more later, but once you've connected, this is what shows up. Uh, you get a drop down of a bunch of different object types. We recognize all of these from the database, right? And we have also other users, which we also recognize from SQL Developer in uh, how you can, if you have the, if you have the access, you can see objects and stuff that's in other users and not just your own. So a uh, little bit talk about these connections, because sometimes when you read about it, it sounds like you can only get a cloud connection. That's just one of them. And it's just a TNS connection. It's not nothing really magic with it, I guess, at that point. But just like SQL Developer, you can set up a whole bunch of them. You can set up a basic, you can set up the cloud connection that we just looked at. You can set up a normal TNS connection, you can set up an easy connect. Uh, I think SQL Developer still hasn't learned how to do that. Uh, you can set up a full connect dis connection descriptor if you want to, and you can set up a, a, a .NET connection for how it works in that world. And with that, we'll see what, uh, how well uh, the demigods will treat us today. So, um, so here we are, this is Visual Code. Uh, and down here is the icon for uh, Oracle Explorer. Uh, why it's called Oracle Explorer here, I don't know. It's really is the Oracle Developer Tools. Uh, um, we have a question here I see in the chat about if the presentation will stay in this channel. Yes, that's the plan. It will be offline for, for a few days or how long, however long it takes us to edit it and uh, cut the bits and beginning and end where it didn't really start to stop and so forth. And uh, then it will be in uh, the Sveog uh, channel. Uh, after that. Uh, also, while we're talking about that channel, please uh, like and sub sub subscribe and all, all of that stuff. Subscribe, click the little bell and so forth. 
Uh, it helps our visibility if more people uh, are members of it and subscribing and so forth. Uh, and you get to know when stuff happens also. So it's good for both. Um, so back to this. Uh, this disk icon, I guess it is, uh, goes to the interface we're gonna be in while we're using this uh, extension. Uh, here it's called Oracle Explorer. It has an Explorer component, but it is really Oracle developer tools. So this is where we end up when we click on it. Uh, here on this second level down, uh, you see Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. That's where I have created my connection to the cloud. In it, I have the three databases that you can have uh, uh, that are autonomous. That, so you can have two of these for free uh, to play around with if you want to. And in here is my, the one I showed on the picture, EVLATP. So we'll close this down again. Uh, and where we're going to spend the time, uh, most of the time at least, is on the database where I have the connection I set up. Uh, it is now not connected. The red piece here uh, tells us that that is the case. So uh, to begin with, we'll connect. And there we have it. And there we have the different objects that we can take a look at. <coughs> um, so uh, now we are connected to it and I got a comment here. Uh, good question, Matthias, but I don't think so because the way I have this set up now and I don't know how to change it, quite frankly. Uh, is that it shares my whole screen. So uh, the question is, so everyone has probably read it, but the, the question is if, if we could narrow this. Uh, what I can do, I, I talk about what I do and the actual code we're going to look at and, and, and see um, it can have a bigger font and if we need a bigger font there I can, I can up it so that you can see it uh, better. Uh, I don't think there's any way around that uh, because it will show the whole screen. Um, well, let's let's live dangerous. I'll open my laptop and I'll disconnect my screen, and we'll see if that changes what you see. So please put something in the chat if this is in any way better. Do you see a difference or is it the same behavior? So now I'm just showing the laptop screen. No comment in the chat. I will then assume that it's not an improvement at all. It is the same. Yes, that's what I thought.
and uh, okay maybe now um yeah we seem to have sound back now Are you sure we don't have sound back? It also looks like it to me now. Yeah, very good. That's what I thought. It, it's it's a bit of a lag before be, between when I talk and and uh, you hear it. So very good. Okay. So uh, now let's. Go back here and we're back to the uh, this screen where we started where we started <laughs> messing around uh, so now <clears throat> if i right click on the connection to the database i can choose open existing sql file and with that i can open up this one, which is the one I'm gonna start this with. Uh, so, as I said, <clears throat> it's a basic package. It declares a record with three items. The one we're gonna play with is really just skill level. Uh, it declares a table of that record, but we, we're not using it for anything really. And then a function that gets the skill. Uh, level uh, and in the body we declare two functions that are private or whatever we call them in PLSQL terms but they can only be called within the, pa the body and the implementation of the public one is really just a, a call to and, and one of the private ones the, that one is called it's just a call to the next one and in the next last one we declare hard code uh, some data return a record and then it gets all the way up to the public one and it pulls off skill level and returns it to the caller uh, pretty basic stuff uh, is the font big enough now um, so that's what we're gonna do now i open this up and in the bottom right here uh, you're gonna see uh, that, well, you may not see it, but it is there. Uh, it says Matthias dot evilate medium. Uh, so that is my connection uh, to the database, the name of the connection. So it shows that that is what, what we're connected to. Uh, and the reason it is there is that I opened up this by right clicking on the connection so it get connected while it opened it up. It, it knew that that's what I wanted. Had I opened it up by going to file, open file and so forth, it would have shown up as disconnected. And then I could, of course, have clicked on it and got up and I could have selected my connection and we were, would have been back to that. Uh, okay, not easy to see. Let's see if we can figure that out. Edit of font size. Okay, if we go with 24 instead, that's a bit bigger. That ought to work. Uh, drop a note if it doesn't. Um, so uh, then, when I'm in a code window where when I have a connection, if I right click in it, I get up a context menu, and in there, I have an option of execute SQL, meaning execute one statement, or execute all, which means run the script, run everything that's in the file. Um, and as we see here, there are uh, shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts, uh, and to run both of these, it would be control R. Um, still looking for feedback on the size of the font here. So if I 
hit that, control R, it runs, uh, and I get a results tab special just for this file, so, so it's it's easy to see wh wh where everything came from and, and other tabs will not jumble up this with, with their results and so forth. Um, and this one, let's see if we can do something with the font there, there too. Um, terminal, that's not a terminal really. Four, I saw a fourteen somewhere. That's not going to be it either. Oh, sorry about that. I don't know where it would be set actually. Uh, and there is no pop up. No. So it just shows the code that we ran. It says package created. And it says commit complete. We're going to get back to the commit part here. It's of course an auto commit. And then it's the next one, package created, commit complete. So now we have it. And if we, if we now look under packages, it will have been added. The one we're looking at is this one. Uh, I click on it and it opens up and it has a body uh, in it. And I can open it up and it shows a bit more about it. Uh, I can right click on it and say that I want to open up the body. Let's see where I do that. Uh, open package body. So here's the one that's in the database. We see it on the breadcrumb up here. We see it starts with uh, the database connection while the one that's a file uh, does not just with the file name and if you hover on the tab it tells you a location on the file system. Uh, so back to this it's the same exact code uh, of course because we just installed it. Uh, but now that we're in here and playing let's see. So if I make an error that uh, item does not exist in this record, so it, it will give me an error if I try to compile. Uh, and when I right click in code in the database, it will give me the options for compile and compile for debug. Uh, it's not the control R, control E, uh, run SQL, run all that we have in a file, but essentially the same function uh, saves to the database instead of somewhere else. Um, so if we do that, hello, okay, um, bring that up a bit more I guess. So here we have it, uh, errors occurred and this component must be declared. Yeah of course it doesn't exist so it, it's, a, it's a problem. Uh, so that's what I get in output. If I go over to problems, I get uh, a little bit more structured uh, report, I guess. 
Um, if I click on the arrow I have here, it will mark that line. So I see where it's at, so I can click on the different arrows, see where they are in, in my code. And if I want to fix it, I can double click on it, it drops my cursor right on the arrow. And then I can of, of course go out and say that, well, that was a mistake, we didn't want to do that. And compile and output says no problems and, or, or no, no errors. The problems tab down here shows that there are no de detected problems. Uh, so in the database that works just fine. You can change code, fix it, save it again, compile pretty much what we expect if we worked with it in uh, SQL Developer, right? Uh, heading over to the file, we can of course make the same error, because we're a bit stubborn. Uh, so if we do this, I can then hit Control E or just go into the context menu and say execute SQL. And then in this tab that I have, I get an error message saying that it didn't work too well. Uh, down in the output, uh, I also get an error stating that it didn't work. It tells me that it's setting pill SQL optimized level to two. Uh, and then I have pretty much the same thing as I had before. I have this problems tab. Um, and I have the same same thing here. If I click on it, it marks the spot and it marks the spot in the file. So it, it knows that this came from the file. So it doesn't open up the object in the database, uh, which uh, at least to me sometimes happens to me in a SQL developer. I, create something from a file, an error occurs, and I click it out, and suddenly I'm over in the database and editing stuff. Uh, so, and of course, if I double click, I end up in the file, right on the spot where the error is, can fix that, and I can hit Control E on my keyboard, compiles again, worked fine, and nothing in the problems, nothing in output, or, or something in output, but says that there are no issues, and we then um, have a f working package again. Um, so that's that part. Uh, now that we have a package in the database, and if I prefer to work file oriented all the, all the, all the time, pretty much, uh, unless there's some special that makes running around with the database just faster to research something, uh, and that happens. But if you do that, you essentially, when you're done, you will want to get the code that you have. You can, cop you can of course, open that up, cut and paste it into a file and so forth, but you can also download it. Uh, so if you right click on the package, there is a uh, download both the package specification and the package body. So if we want to grab the package body that we've now fixed, uh, we get a, a, a file file selection window pop up. <clears throat> it defaults to the folder that we have open or to the workspace. I can change the, the name of the file, of course. I can change the location where it's going to drop it. Uh, and this is by default, it's also possible to specify in the configuration of this extension that I always want to drop things I download into, say, downloads uh, or some other directory. So download that and it gets downloaded and it opens up uh, the file <clears throat> so I can see the file that I just got downloaded. And of course, there we have it. Uh, we don't need to have it open, so we close it down again. Um, and now uh, while we're talking about, oops, 
uh, PHP SQL uh, set settings. Well, about about that. If if you want me to make the font larger, just state state it in the in the chat. But uh, it, I haven't seen anything in a while, so I, I presume that this works. Um, so if you want to take a look at PHP SQL settings, it's also over on the uh, context menu for the conf uh, for the connection. Uh, so here we have it, PSQL debugger and compiler settings. Here are debugger things, and we'll jump over to the compiler settings. This is pretty much what, what one would expect, I would say. Uh, you can set the optimization levels and the PLSCOPE identifiers and so forth, and you can set how you want, what kind of warnings and so forth you want to see. And uh, um, well, that's about, about it. You can also choose the configuration so that you can set it different for different things. Uh, so th that's about, about that. That's all I really have to have. To Talk about for that. Just good to know where it's at if you want to change it. And <clears throat> then I just want to talk a little bit about this um, with working in the database. Uh, I prefer to bring things up from the database to look at it and understand and research, but not really save directly to the database. But <clears throat> if you do that. And or rather, when you do that, because there are times when it it makes sense, uh, you will not want to have auto save on. And if you don't know, auto save can be found on the file menu in Visual Code. You enable it here, and it continue continues to save uh, things you change. And and by default, it has. Um, a timing of 1000 milliseconds, one second, and then it saves it after you've made a change. So it can, of course, you can make a few keystrokes and then it saves it. That works kind of okay if, if it's a file because it just saves it to the file and the file sits there and, and uh, that, that works. Um, I, I tend to not work that way, but it, work, it works, it doesn't cause a real issue. The problem comes when you work in the database. Because in the database, when you save to the database, it's also validated. And if you start typing a new line of code, that line will not compile properly until at least you've written that line out. Or maybe you need to write 20 more lines before it all really works. Like you've started an if statement well that you need to close it before it's going to compile okay right so you don't want the overhead of it continuously uh, saving to the database because it's going to slow the the product down or, or your uh, your experience of the product should would be slowed down so you don't want it for that reason and you don't want it because it's going to continuously have errors and show things in the problems section. Uh, so that's one thing to consider, or at least if you have autosave always on, then uh, be aware. Um, and now, so we looked a little bit at PL SQL and so forth. Let's look at uh, an ordinary, or maybe shouldn't call it ordinary, uh, a file with SQL statements, uh, a file that kind of uh, is my everyday work. Like I have an open tab and I sit and, and write SQL statements and I write one ad hoc after another and do, do things with it. It's not a complete piece of code. It's, it's a flow of things that I have thought I wanted to, to run that day. Uh, uh, or it could be a, a set of structured statements that you want, want to run one after another, but it's not PHP SQL code. So here's one of those, and um, I have 
put some some pieces in that I'll use later in the presentation. Um, so we're gonna go over one hour, I see. But um, <clears throat> so what I want to start with showing is the is the intelligence the intelligence in showing uh, code. So it's pretty much lightning fast and. What I really like with it is the fact that it doesn't stop me. A, a, a lot of projects that that's doing IntelliSense, when it has, when I stop and, and type for a little bit, it does it, finds some stuff, and then I'm stuck with that. I need to make a selection before I can continue or hit escape and keep typing. This is fluid. This is just there if I want to use it, or I can just keep typing. And it's, as as you can see, it's extremely fast. It's there's not no, no lag at all. It's it uh, moves with me as as I type it. And yes, you can turn it off if you hate that stuff. Uh, so with that, let's let's talk talk about uh, and he, he, here is. The reason I didn't use this product for quite a while. IntelliSense, all kinds of things in the product, in, especially IntelliSense, made everything uppercase. I find that to look pretty childish in code today. I came from the mainframe, so at one point all my code was uppercase, but today it's not the look I desire. Uh, so. But of course, this is Visual Code, so I can of course go into Visual Code and I can transform it to lowercase, and it looks good. But that's not the workflow that is kind of neat. Every keyword you would ever type, you you would do that with. So I and many more asked for it to be part of this extension, and it is now. Uh, so if we look at the settings, uh, if we search for a part of the word Intelli. IntelliSense, yeah. So we get up a bunch of things for it. We have this, that is, we can enable, disable it. So if you don't want it at all, you can just stop it from happening. And then we have two options here. One is for keyword, like select and from and such. You can make those lowercase, thank you very much. And you can make objects, table names and so forth. Also lowercase, thank you very much. Now it is the way I would like it to be. And to see if it works, let's try it. And now it's lowercase. Uh, pretty nice and good that it works that, that, that way that you can choose if if you prefer it one way or another, or if you prefer just the keywords uppercase, but not the, the object names and so forth. Um, so another thing that I, I like, and I don't know if I'm doing something wrong when I work in a lot of products like SQL developer and so forth, but for me to get IntelliSense to work, if, if I don't really want the query that it forces me to write, but I just want to see what columns is in, in an object or something like that, or, or see if a, a table of a certain name exists and so forth, then it doesn't work. Of course, I can click all over in the Explorer side and navigate the tree and, and try to find things. But if I want to use in, in the in the code window, uh, it, it doesn't allow that. So here, if I just type the name of the schema on an, on a line by itself, no statement, nothing around it, it shows, okay, here are the objects that exist in this schema. And if I go down and say, well, okay, I want this one, and then I want to see what columns we have it. Okay, well, it was spelt, description was spelt out in this case. Okay, very good, now I know. I think that's nice. 
not, not, I may be alone on that, but I, I, I really like that. Um, so let's take a little bit more look at this result tabs that we get. Here we have two tables. It will show what tables I have on, and what columns I have in those tables. So now if I execute this, control E to execute the stuff I have selected, it opens up a results window for that tab and it shows uh, the queries one after another. If if I do this in Civil Developer, it ends up being a script, right? And it, it's all text and, and there's no richness to the result. Uh, I cannot page around in, in the result set and I, I, I cannot click somewhere and say I want to save it and, and so forth. Uh, this is all live. Uh, so I can, I can mark a, a few rows that I want to save and I, I can, on this one where I have more rows than uh, then what, what fits, I can page around in it. Uh, I can jump back. Um, and it's possible to hide it if it's something that I don't need to see. Uh, I can also copy things out. So I can select and, and unselect uh, data. Uh, I can unselect all rows uh, that not just this page, but following pages too. And then I can click a few that I want to see. I can choose to save it as, uh, as uh, CSV or as JSON. Um, so let's try this. If See if I get it to work now. I unselect all those, but I say that, okay, these three clan desk things, th those are interesting. Uh, I click this button to get it copied and now I want to see it. So here I get it, I got my three lines and I got the headers automatically with it uh, and I can drop it wherever I want to. Want, want to. Um, and there are settings if you want to have single quotes, double quotes, surrounding your uh, your strings. Uh, so you can go in and change that. Remove that. And we will head back to this tab. See if there was something else. Well, there are uh, saving to a file and f fetching and save all those. Uh, but, uh, that allows you to do that without it dropping into objects here. So you develop a, on, on, on the results tab, you, if you want to copy from there, you have to get it into that grid. Uh, here you don't, you can just save it. Uh, so you develop, you would have to like right click and choose export and go into to that widget to select it. Uh, same, same thing, just different ways to do it. Um, And these things, as you work here, both of them are active at the same time, right? Uh, I think I like that part. I also like the fact that this shows the SQL that was executed. So if I get back here, and in this case it's a very simple SQL, but sometimes it's not. Uh, it's kind of neat to be able to, with the result, also have uh, the SQL. Uh, so I can just look at it and see, well, oh, yeah, oh yeah, that is what I was looking at when I got that data. Um, so another thing I want to, to take a look at here when we're here is the how the results table looks because right now everything is tabs and I either look at the result or I look at the code I'm writing and that's not how I want to work most of the time. So how I want to work most of the time, I, I just pulled the tab, dropped it out on the right side, and then it becomes side by side. So I can write my queries 
and I can see the result or I can write a new query based on the result I see and, and, and so forth, just the way we typically do it, right? And then of course I can mimic uh, the SQL developer model of working unless you change the defaults that you have code on top and you have the result further down. Uh, so uh, it's just uh, an easy choice to move things around to get the setup one wants. And we talked a little bit before about the breadcrumbs and the breadcrumbs is, is this stuff that's on top of a, of a piece of code. Uh, you can turn it off if you don't want to see it. I, I, I think it's kind of nice. Uh, so here we have it for a file and um, we can find uh, the different contents of the package. So here I've opened up the package body and this is the last one. This is the implementation that creates stuff and I can click on it and go to the, a certain uh, variable in it or whatever else. So this is a very small package, but if you have a big package, finding a way around, finding where the different things are, is always a little bit of, of a problem. Uh, this makes it easy and all the levels back from this, uh, you can, so you can go here, you can see that, well, you have these two levels and you can find what's in, in the top level and there's a type and you can click on that and go to that and so forth. Uh, if you take a look at what's in the database, you have the same thing essentially working in an identical way. So here you have the package body because that's what, what we're in and you can open up a certain area, you can go to it and you find that, okay, that's where the variable is. Um, for this Bird jumps, they're pretty long and most of the time you don't need them to be that long, right? You you need really, you're interested in the package body and, and from that on what different pieces are in it. And of course, uh, the bird camp is, is active here, right? So if I click, if you look at it, where I'm on employee skill there, if I click down here, it's gonna change where it's at. So wherever I click in the code shows where I'm at right now. But I really don't need all of this. So in the settings, if I search on breadcrumb, there is a breadcrumbs file path. And this is general for SQL, for visual code, but you can, you can turn off the file path in the breadcrumb. So if I do that, now it starts from package body. So it's, especially if you have a small screen, it's kind of nice to, to not have it be too long and make it a little bit easier to work with. Uh, And I'm gonna look here. Uh, one thing that's kind of nice is that if you just hover over a table name or any kind of object, you get a very fast pop-up describe. And this is text that you can just mark up, cut and paste. And then you uh, can drop it somewhere else and all the colors, all the for formatting and all of that is maintained. At, at least if you stay within Visual Code. So, uh, these rows here, they, they are called to the package we've been looking at. Uh, so, I can of course get a pop-up describe of the package. That too is kind of nice, but sometimes I, I look at it and say, well, there's something wrong with it. I, I, need, I, need, I need, need to take a look at it. So now I can go into peak and I can say, well, let me see the implementation of this thing I'm going to call here. And then it, I get into it, it marks it so that it looks like this. The thing has actually been called, but I have the rest of the code here too. 
I could go down here and say, well, this thing really ought to return 44. And when I change this, Visual Code opens up that uh, the object I changed. It's opened up and I can go to it and it says 44, the change I made is already there. If I now just close this, it tells me, well, you have changes, would you want to save them? Okay, so we save them and when it's saved, I can run it and now it says 44. So from peeking into it, I can make a change and can make it go live immediately because I edit in the database. Uh, I can also, instead of peeking and then changing and doing all that, I can open up so I get it in the tab directly. That did not work. Um, there we go. So now it opened it up. Of course, I can go down here and say, well, it really should be 42. So everyone knows that that's the right answer. And if I now close it, I get the same answer, save it, and I run it and now the answer is 42. Um, so that for so good. Then we've already seen uh, some use of SQL plus commands, right? This is not part of the SQL language or anything. It's 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 a command that originates in SQL plus. Uh, so let's look at that because there's quite a few that you can just use uh, in this product. Here I've made an example where I'm using spool to create a file with output. I run the same command um, that gets the skill level and I turn off spooling. Uh, so if I run this with control E, uh, so somewhere here, here is starting spool, we ran it, we got the answer 42 and we turned off spool. So now we can open up that file just to take a look at it real quick. Uh, because I was already down in the results area of this, it ended up here. I can of course drag uh, it up towards the other tabs here if I want to or, or, or so. But here we have it. I ran this command as it was 42. Uh, get this, the rest of it, it did a commit and uh, uh, and it turned off spooling. Um, so that's kind of good to know. Um, so now we're over to the area that I mentioned before that we're going to talk about or to commit. Uh, as you see, we can even clear this. If we clear that and I run this three commands they just do a basic return data it doesn't do a transaction or anything like that if I run this so it, I get 42 three times of course but what 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 of interest right now is that we get a commit each time and I really really don't want the tool to commit for me uh, whenever it feels like it I want to control that uh, not everyone does, but I think that's for a lot of people. It's the oracle way to to not have auto commit on. So there is a setting. I don't get it to work. Uh, I think there's a bug with it. But there's yet another uh, SQL plus command. So run that. We see down here that it ran that command and now if we again clear this window just so it's easier to see what's really happening run those three there is no committing anymore and now it works the way I want it to I have to run this every time I, I, I want, the, want to do this of course but that's, that's going to be a, a change too so that it can be set as, as, as a 
an always on, on thing. It's just not there yet, apparently. Now, if we look on the right side here, we have a history thing on the bottom, and it has a, a connection on top. Uh, so if I open that up, this is essentially all the code that we've been running here today. Uh, so I can just pick one and uh, get it into an editor or, or run it if I right click on it. Uh, I can copy to an editor, I can get a new editor, uh, I can run it, I can even bookmark it. Uh, and that's the next thing I want to talk to. Bookmarking SQL. It's a way of saving SQL that you're going to run often. Uh, and of course, this is not saving things that's going to be part of your code that should be checked in or something like that. It's, it's more your personal thing. You often look up a certain 15 columns in V$ session or th that kind of things. Uh, so now if I mark two, I right click and I can here find bookmark SQL. There's also a sh shortcut, but I'm probably not going to bookmark enough that I'm going to learn that shortcut. So when I choose to do that, I first need a folder name. I have no folders, so I need to create one. So I select new folder and then I give the name Svirog. And then I need to give the script or yeah, the, query, the set of queries that I'm bookmarking here a name. And here it is essentially tables and columns that we're gonna have. So I give it that name on in the bookmarks area. I now got my folder name Svirg and in that I have this. I can open it up so I can run it. I can open it in an editor, copy it in an editor, rename or delete. So if I run it, uh, it asks me for a connection. I select the only connection I have and then it runs it and I get get me this, um, this the same result we looked at before, right? Uh, so it's a neat, convenient way. It's pretty much the same thing as loading it in a file, running the file, seeing the output. It's it's just a shortcut, and it gets saved away. The tool knows where you have this. It's it's saved in in its metadata. Um, And the last thing for the demo is I presume quite a few people are feeling that why would I run control E to run a SQL? I've, for 15 years I've hit control enter. I've never learned to not do that. Well, yeah, me too. So that's one of the good things with Visual Code is that most things can be configured, and this too. So, in the command palette, there is a preference for open keyboard shortcuts. We go into that, and I don't want that left there. So this is where we get into. Here are all the shortcuts for all the different things, all extensions, all context of everything that's in the product. So we could search here by Oracle or execute SQL or something like that. But what I typically do is that I search for the short for the shortcut I know something has, if I know it has it. If I don't know that, then of course I can't do this. Uh, but often it's this way. I, I search for it and I find that here we have execute SQL. So I dig, double click on this line, I think anywhere, but on the key binding. Uh, and then I can enter another one. So I want this to be control enter because that sits in my muscle mem memory, will never leave it. Uh, now it's not here anymore. And of course I can see that it's part of the ones that are on control enter by searching for it. Here we have it, Oracle execute SQL. So close that down, we go here, and you can't see me hit Control-Enter, but trust me, I'm hitting Control-Enter. 
and there we have it. Uh, so, if you want that, that's uh, that's there uh, for us to take a look at. Now, we'll head back to the presentation and That's where we were on the live demo. We've completed that. And there is really, oh, that seems to have lost uh, a page here, but we'll get to that later. So the last thing is debugging. Uh, we've run long, so I wouldn't have wanted to keep everyone on a long debugging session anyway, but one reason I'm not showing it is that I'm running an, a Mac, an M1 Mac. There is no Oracle database that can be installed on it, no matter really how you do. There, there, there are ways around it, but not convenient uh, because it's an R ARM processor. There is no such Oracle database yet. Uh, and I didn't want to fiddle with setting up a remote database somewhere in the cloud or anywhere that isn't autonomous. So why don't I debug into autonomous? Well, it's not supported yet. It's coming, that too, they say. Um, so with that, I'm just gonna talk about it because most of us has seen debugging at some point. This does it very nicely and has all the bells and whistles we expect. We can initiate it both as a user and remote and with that, what we mean with that is that you can have the code in front of you or in the Explorer, you right click in the database, say, I want to debug this package. And then you get, like in SQL Developer, you get up a little pop-up says that, what are your parameters to it? You hit enter on that and you get into your debugging session if you have compiled for debugging, set it up right and so forth. Um, so that's the normal way. Then you have remote debugging can do that with SQL Developer also with the, the right configuration. Uh, and what that allows is that it allows you to, to pick up a call that comes in from an application that calls, a, 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 say, a package in, in the, the database. You can intercept that and get that up in your debugger. And there are many reasons why one would want to do that. One is that sometimes the application ships in a lot of data that is very hard to just by hand force into the package. Um, another one is, is that you really don't know what's coming in so and you don't have it instrumented so that it tells you all the parameters that came in. Uh, so intercepting and just taking a look at it can be a nice way. Um, So, and, and then we have the watches to see when, when a variable changes, we can step into code, we can step over code, we can step out of code, and all the other things that we expect from debugging. And with that, I'm, I'm done. If there are any questions, uh, drop them into the chat and I'll I'll answer them uh, in a little short while. I'll uh, um, I'll close this down. Um, in the mean, meantime, do do like and subscribe, and um, and we will put this up. Uh, this will be part of this channel when we get around to having it uh, edited and, and so forth. Uh, it it may take a little little while, but it shouldn't take too long. I hope. And if you don't see it soon, uh, nag me so I get around to fix it. Um, so that's that. Uh, talk about other other things while we're waiting for to see if someone drops something in. Uh, I guess everyone has seen that uh, Open World is back. It's renamed. It's in Vegas uh, now because they moved it from San Francisco. Uh, it's in October time frame sometime. Uh, so if that's of interest. Um, you may want to look into it. It's not kind of sketchy yet as to the details of it. Um, 
Um, so I don't see any, any questions. If you have questions, you know where to find me. Just send me an email uh, or send a question on Meetup or, or something. That, that, it usually is easy to find me. Uh, people usually don't have a problem with that. But if you do meet up, you've already been there. So just uh, enter a comment there. Um, thank you for listening. Uh, sorry, we went a little bit over the, the hour, quite a bit over the hour actually, but uh, I, I blame part of it on the <laughs> fiddling that I did in the middle. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, see you soon or talk to you soon. Bye.